For the average man, every day something is added, physically, mentally, and spiritually. It is said for the Taoist, every day something is removed. And at a certain point in life, getting rid of things is the most important. Seeming to be part of this reality matrix that we live in. If you manage to clear your plate, within no time, it fills up again. And it's no different with my making videos. Every week I'm excited to bring you something. Within a few days, new ideas and information replace the ideas of only a few days ago. And I typically don't worry about it. If I did, it would drive me crazy. I try to live in the moment. And when I'm ready to share, I share whatever I'm most excited about. And today, that happens to be the nation of Turkmenistan. Welcome. This topic was actually brought on by YouTube, suggesting this video by a channel in which I'll leave the link below. Very exciting discovery. And we, for the last many years, looking at pockets of survival all throughout this realm. Amazing buildings found scattered throughout cities, towns, and oftentimes in the middle of nowhere. Similar to the mountain ranges we find, small pockets of preservation dotting these mountain ranges and leaving us clues as to what things look like in times of past. And what would an entire city look like, preserved and inherited? We looked at a little town several videos back, supposedly built in the mid-1800s and really just being a snapshot in time, perfectly preserved. And this is another city, more in the neck of the woods of what we would imagine the Tartarian people or empire to exist in. Of course we can't attribute all of this to one region, such as Tartaria, as seen on the old maps. There would have been several factions of this one world people scattered throughout our realm, but Tartaria being the convenient label we give to these people. This whole subject, of course, being a mystery unfolding. And that brings me back to this city, Ashgabat. Originally named Polteras, Ashgabat is the capital and largest city in Turkmenistan. And this city has a population of a million people. And here it is from the Google, out in the middle of nowhere. And this is a fascinating city. Let's just zoom out and give you an idea. Here we go. Just to the east of the Caspian Sea and to the south of this absolute wasteland in the country of what is now called Turkmenistan. I remember as a child almost having a somewhat of a Mandela effect. When I looked at the globe one day, I noticed a cluster of countries all ending with Stan. And here we are today, Turkmenistan, bordered by Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan. Turkmenistan is one of the more sparsely populated nations in Asia. The country has a total of six million people. Turkmenistan has been at the crossroads of civilization for centuries. Merv is one of the oldest oasis cities in Central Asia. And we've looked at Merv before, completely melted. It was once the biggest city in the world. In medieval times, Merv was also one of the great cities of the Islamic world and an important stop on the Silk Road. Annexed by the Russian Empire in 1881, Turkmenistan became a constituent republic of the Soviet Union. It became independent after the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. Now this is where it gets interesting. 
Turkmenistan possesses the world's fourth largest reserves of natural gas. Most of the country is covered by the Black Sand Desert. From 1993 to 2017, citizens received government-provided electricity, water, and natural gas free of charge. The sovereign state of Turkmenistan was ruled by President for Life Saparmarut Niyazov until his death in 2006. And later this guy was elected president in 2007 and the country has been widely criticized for its human rights record, especially minorities, press, and religion. So very oppressive in one way and on the other hand receiving free power and utilities sounding very communist. So this is very similar to many ridiculous stories of inheritance told in times of old. Beautiful cities and small populations maxing out at five to ten thousand, making absolutely no sense. And here, in modern times, in this country, we see something very similar. A small population in the middle of the desert and having one of the most glorious cities I've ever seen. Every single part of this city is beyond reason. No need for all these temples, all these parliamentary seeming buildings with domes and antiquitech like we've never seen before. Perhaps there is more preserved history in this city than in most complete with Tartarian statues, and these buildings are completely mind-blowing. Talk about ghost cities. These are the mother of ghost cities. Completely unnecessary. And either this is a city for the future, or a city from the past. Let's just have a little peek. This looks like we're looking at the World's Fair, and look how they also call it the City of White Marble. So this is kind of our tip-off as if we needed a tip off. But back to our city, look at this. And we can see the modern junk cubes in the background, but this city is littered with tech. Here are one of the monuments. Let's zoom into this. And just pristine, not in ruins like we see everywhere else. And all the lights in this city seem to be free energy. This being absolute tech, as we understand now, gathering free electricity from the air. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm just blown away. I don't even know which image to show you. Also fascinating. They just run these lights everywhere, excessively. The millions of dollars it would cost to power up a city like this. Nobody's even living in these buildings. Nobody's even populating the city. This is like the most beautiful city for nobody. And they tell us, I believe, that this is a solar gathering device. I really don't care what they tell us. We know better. And everything tying back to our world's fairs, except not the right time period to be redesignating this city for nobody. So they skipped the whole world's fair and just said that this massive monstrosity of a device is a ferris wheel and many reviews on the small amount of tourism about this ferris wheel saying that it's a stupid ferris wheel you really can't see out defeating the whole purpose of a ferris wheel being boxed in this way and now for once i think we can see what our ferris wheels used to look like in all of these world's fairs in the 18 and 1900s. They were probably dismantled and repurposed, as we always suspected. We just had no idea what they were. And here it is. And in fact, this whole city offering more clues to our past than anything I've seen in a while. Let's have another look on the Google Earth. Again, in the middle of nowhere, and just completely teched out sporting centers everywhere so advanced so sophisticated and for what 
here is a great depiction in this city. On the outskirts of the city, we see these same patterns that we see out in the desert, far away from cities. And these guys, I believe, are still utilizing this tech. And again, in the evening, completely lit up and one of the coolest grids I've ever seen just outside of this city. Apparently still functioning and it seems like their plan is to completely overgrow this with vegetation. You can see the perfectly spaced trees and I think that the idea will be to hide this for future generations. Same here. Terraformed for the worst. And again, the explanation is walking paths. And if this was a bustling populous center, I might understand. And everywhere you look, absolute redesignation of advanced tech. This is absolutely mind blowing. Every single corner of this city is futuristic. This must be the Ferris wheel, and we can see it from the top. This pattern, this being some sort of grand machine. And here again, the plan is to cover this with growth. And this lends to the idea that this is something being created for the future. We're told that 80% of the populace works for the government, really sounding like an inside job here in the center of town and very interesting how all the roofs are green is this copper something used in the old world and really mind-blowing just an excess of high-tech infrastructure the same pattern what i call the crab pincher style similar to the vatican and here's some ruins Seeming as if somebody is really busy out here, covering up, restoring what's left over from an absolutely mind-blowing civilization. What explanation could we give to our people in this time period? How many parks do you need? A little star fort design here. These looking like the Tibetan towers. Perhaps this is where the future generations will gather. And what lies will they be told? And we just haven't even scratched the surface. This city is so mind-blowing. Corner to corner. I think that this is going to explain so much. And whoever knows what's going on with this city and give us some serious explanations. Not at all what I was expecting today. I mean, I don't care where this would be located. It would impress me. But the fact that it's out here in the middle of nowhere, in a no-name country, for an almost non-existent people, brings up a lot of questions. And this is one instance where I'm almost out of words. And here not allowing us a ground view, similar to China. And this sophisticated landscaping in these geometric patterns, water on both sides of the pathways. This is over the top for any people. Unnecessary and completely mind-blowing. This one ending with the glorious monument. Here we continue. And I think whenever we're seeing the trees, we're covering something up, but yet so much remaining. And these walkways just continue. This is one of the most beautiful cities ever and showing all the signs of the old world, which is the advanced world. And I could just explore forever. I've already lost one screen recording. I think I'll cut this one here. But no doubt, I encourage you all to dig in and let's get to the bottom of this. Next, I want to talk about a Robert Zipper video. Many of you may know him. There's a channel called Atlantean Gardens. And he made a great video 
on history. And it was about this poet called Hesiod. And I was absolutely fascinated by this poet who had a poem of 800 words called The Ages of Man. The Ages of Man are the stages of human existence on the earth according to Greek mythology. Hesiod offers accounts of the successive ages of humanity, which tend to progress from an original, long-gone age, in which humans enjoyed a nearly divine existence to the current age. In the two accounts that survive from ancient Greece and Rome, this degradation of the human condition over time is indicated symbolically with medals of successively decreasing value. This poem is said to be written between 750 and 650 BC. It starts off with the Golden Age, the only age that falls within the rule of Kronos, created by immortals who live on Olympus. These humans were said to live among the gods and freely mingle with them. Peace and harmony prevailed during this age, and we see such things in old depictions humans alongside giants, coexisting, beautiful architecture. Humans did not have to work to feed themselves, for the earth provided food in abundance. They lived to a very old age with youthful appearance, and eventually died peacefully. Their spirits lived on as guardians. And then we have the Silver Age, led by Zeus. Men in the Silver Age lived for a hundred years. A short time as grown adults and spent that time in strife with one another. During this age men refused to worship the gods and Zeus destroyed them for their impiety. After death humans of this age became blessed spirits of the underworld. Then there was the Bronze Age continuing to decline. Men of the Bronze Age were hardened and tough as war was their purpose and passion. Zeus created these humans out of the ash tree. Their armor was forged of bronze, as were their homes and tools. Men of this age were undone by their own violent ways and left no named spirits. This age came to an end with a flood. And then there's a little revival, the only age that actually moves backwards, which in this case is forward, and called the Heroic Age. It's the one that doesn't correspond with any metals and seems to be short-lived. And finally, there's the good old Iron Age, the age that the author of the poem finds himself in. During this age, humans live an existence of toil and misery. Children dishonor their parents. Brothers fight with brother. And the social contract between guest and host is forgotten something we might simply call etiquette. During this age, might makes right, and bad men use lies to be thought good. At the height of this age, humans no longer feel shame or indignation at wrongdoing. Babies will be born with gray hair, and the gods will have completely forsaken humanity. There will be no help against evil. And really, what can be said about this poem? It's the absolute truth from everything we've come to realize and discover. And this also giving us an indication of the keepers of this realm, or the controllers, and the real controllers. Not just the financial system or governments. And in this poem, the controllers being called gods. Zeus, Kronos, whatever we call them, there is talk of them fashioning man from this or that, and no different from the good book and all religions, having a very similar story and indicating that all this may be someone's little experiment, creating new races and conditions, perhaps as an experiment. And in this particular story, each race becoming stupider, weaker, and less compassionate. In this realm really seeming to be a test, similar to the story of Job and God and the devil playing the part of scientists. 
performing an experiment and having a little talk about it. So that's it. I thank you so much for joining me and do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe. My dog hates when I make videos. He just thinks I'm staring at a screen and talking, which I am. And what are my final conclusions as to what we're seeing in this region? I think when we look at this Darvasa gas crater in the country of Turkmenistan, we might get some clues. And since it's the end of the video, I won't beat around the bush. I think this may be a blast zone in the middle of this desert, as we can see here, located about 160 miles from the city of Ashgabat, and they tell us this is the result of a natural gas field that collapsed into a cavern. We hear an idea of what it looks like, about 250 feet wide, and when we zoom out, we may get some understanding as to what took place and what wiped out what we clearly see as civilization on older maps, having vast cities and trade routes, and now just a wasteland. With this massive burning crater, shrouded in mystery. Vague explanations, such as Soviet geologists, may have intentionally set it on fire. And it is thought to have been burning continuously since 1971. Ultimately, the result of something that vaporized civilization as little as 200 years ago. And this particular crater is still burning.